Jonathan and I started talking online and it wasn't any time at all that we became friends. He told me he was from Australia and I did hear an accent and I thought it was pretty sexy. What I like about Jonathan is he's a very sensitive person. He does carry his heart on his sleeve. He is very emotional. There's something special about him that makes me love him. Jonathan is, he is a widower, has been for five years. He has a daughter who is 19 years old. She lives in England. I am in love with Jonathan. This is a picture of Jonathan. He had an evening that he went out with some of his friends. When I look into Jonathan's heart, I see a very kind person, very affectionate. I look at those lips and all I wanna do is just kiss them. After 16 months, I still haven't seen Jonathan face to face yet. Jonathan wasn't able to video chat with me because the telephones that he had purchased were cheap. Jonathan has lived in Miami for the last five years. He started his dream job about 11 months ago on a construction site. The problem with Jonathan is he is in debt from previous projects that he has conducted. Once Jonathan's debt is paid in full, he will acquire $10.3 million for earnings that he has done on previous jobs. He cannot leave the construction site until his debts are paid. He is being held hostage. I realize we're in the United States of America, but he is being held hostage. There is a guard at the gate that keeps him from leaving the premise. He lives out of his car. The situation is very glim for him and he has been depressed. After knowing Jonathan for two weeks, I started sending him money. One day last year, he was at a job site and he decided to help out and end up almost severing his hand. I sent Jonathan $10,000 to purchase the machinery to repair his hand. This is one of my portfolios from one of the investment companies that I had. Today, it's zero. All the money in this account went to Jonathan. The banks got upset and accused me of trying to finance terrorists. My boyfriend, Jonathan, is not a terrorist. There are four banks that refuse to do business with me any further because of fraudulent activity. Since I've been kicked out of the banks, I have sent Jonathan over $200,000 in cryptocurrency. It's fast, easy, and nobody asks any questions, and there's not supposed to be a trace on it. Over the past year and a half, I have sent him almost $1 million. Hands down, my niece Jane, she is being scammed. I wrote Dr. Phil because he's the only one that can help her. I'm a huge Dr. Phil fan. I've been watching him for 20 years. Nancy, she's being scammed by someone calling themselves Sean Carter. I have tried my best to talk to Jane. She won't listen. Everything Jonathan says about himself, he's just a classic scammer. We speak every single morning to each other. That's our time together. He says, I'm going to spank you. And we have a little thing. Oh, yeah, I'm such a bad girl. Go ahead, spank me. <laughs> One thing about Jane is she's very much into signs. Jane believes that the day that she met Jonathan is significant because it's the same day she met her husband. I do believe that I received a sign from Gary because Jonathan and I met the same day that Gary and I had our first date. And I just feel that, that Gary's saying it's okay. Jane has also sent Jonathan money. From what I can find out, Jane has sent Jonathan $60,000. I have no idea how much Jane has sent this man. I have no idea. I really hope that Dr. Phil is able to give Jane a serious wake-up call, get her to stop sending money to Jonathan, because she's already lost 60000 or more to this scammer, and that's a lot of money. You really care about Jane. Absolutely. And you, you fear that she's being taken advantage of. Yes, sir. And, and you're concerned about her how, but more than just financially. Correct. I'm concerned about her emotional state also, her heart being taken advantage of as well. Yeah. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.